All right, you guys. Hello, it is Jessica Welser Nelson. This is Tyson Rose. I am so excited. I'm not even letting Tyson talk yet because he is in the running for the $100,000 Beachbody Challenge. And we need your vote every single day um, starting on June 1st to June 7th. You can vote once a day. I want you to vote. I want your family to vote. I want everybody that can vote to vote. Um, but what I really wanted to do was come on here and share Tyson's story because it's more than a vote, you guys. This um, has been one of the great, you guys, I've been a, a coach since what, 2010. And this is one of my greatest moments. <laughs> um, Tyson doesn't, I've never told him this, but literally one of my greatest moments in my coaching history, uh, because Tyson is Alicia, one of my very first coaches, my very first female coach that ever joined me in 2010. This is her husband. And that's not, that's not like the end of the cool part. <laughs> Um, Tyson, I'm going to tell the story first, then I'll let him tell the story. Uh, Tyson sat on the sidelines, you guys, 300 plus pounds, um, overweight, unhealthy, um, all of those things for over a decade. And I think it is so extraordinary to be sitting here today, not only celebrating the person that he is, the work that he's done, the life that he is now getting to live, um, but to, to hopefully get him to win this amazing um, Beachbody Challenge prize. It's actually the last Beachbody Challenge. They are retiring the Beachbody Challenge. So it's even more special to me. We've had winners on our Dare to Dream team in the past. This is one of my favorite parts about what we do is celebrating um, somebody that makes a decision that draws their line in the sand, that embraces the process and changes their own life. Because no matter how much as a coach you want it for someone, this is proof. It was his wife. <laughs> you cannot do it for someone. They have to make that choice. And to get to witness Tyson go from a shell of a human, the, the person that I knew, I hardly knew, to this guy that's here today that I'm literally, I mean, we were just on one of our success club trips and I'm like just staring at him like a weirdo because it's almost like I just met this person, yet I've known him for so long. So I cannot wait for you guys to just hear his story, be inspired, hopefully help us vote him um, into that winner spot. But I really think it's going to be a treat. So hang out with us. We're going to try to do this in like five or 10 minutes, even though it's like his life story. Um, but Tyson, I would love for you to just share kind of like where you were at. You know, I know you were what, 325 pounds. You had a diagnosis. Go ahead and just um, share that. And I'll just interject as I, as I need to. Yeah. Yeah. 325 pounds. And, and thank you for having me on. Um, 325 pounds, uh, you know, I couldn't do the simplest tasks around the house. I couldn't, uh, you know, do simple chores, you know, trying to get under the sink and sit up straight and reach at the same time. I just, I didn't have the flexibility. The stomach was in the way. I, I couldn't play golf with my father-in-law. You know, I, I walked three holes and I had to take a break. And my father-in-law is like 70 and he's looking at me like, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Uh, you know, I couldn't go on like excursions with my wife and do zip lining with her, you know, because the harnesses wouldn't fit. So I, you know, I was already being excluded from things. And then I was excluding myself because I didn't like looking at myself in photos. Uh, I'd go through Alicia's phone. You need to delete that. You need to delete that. When, when she'd post a, a picture of me on Facebook, I'd, what are you doing, Alicia? You know, I don't like being taken pictures of. Don't put that out there. Um, and you know, it was when I actually started having health issues that it really sunk in that I have to do something. It's, um, you know, it's more than just my perception of myself. Uh, I'm going to die. Um, and that really affected me because my father died from obesity. Um, and I was so upset that he didn't take care of himself and that I lost him early. And I recognized that I was doing that to myself and to my own children, um, that if I didn't change, I was going to be leaving them early. And didn't your dad even, um, cause I know, of course I know a little bit of your story. Weren't you even like unaware of the extent of his health issues? I mean, obviously you knew he was overweight, but, but almost like you were able to kind of like, you know, hide, hide, he was hiding the truth from you. Absolutely. Yeah, no, he had major health issues, I, you know, diabetic, um, you know, who knows what else, uh, you know, and these are things that I didn't even find out until after he had passed away. And how ironic, though, is it to be sitting there so mad at your dad, you know, which, which, you know, like you said, he was taken so young, and it was something in his control is how you felt, but but to not even be able to recognize you're doing the same thing to your children, because you have two yeah. kids. Yeah, no, it, it was. It was such a 
uh, you know, epiphany moment. And I don't know why it took so long to see it, but you know, when you're laying there on a hospital bed, like, wow, this is real, you know, and, and you got these blood pressure monitors hooked up to you and you, your blood pressure is, you know, 160 over 110, um, you know, and that's not even the highest it got to. There was a football game that I was watching. My blood pressure went over 200, uh, 200 over like 119. And I mean, these are just like, you know, I'm, a sh I'm about to have a stroke, you know? And how old were you at that time? Oh, goodness, this wasn't long ago, uh, 39, 38. Wow. Um, but, you know, who knows? That would be scary. Oh, yeah, no. And who knows how bad it had been for how long? You know, I just happened to go to the hospital one day. Um, you know, who knows? It could have been happening for five years before that. Uh, there's just no telling. And then so didn't you have like an interaction with the nurse or something that was really just kind of like an embarrassing moment, but also maybe a, a moment that was a turning point? Yeah, well, she, you know, really made a big deal about, you know, how, how my blood pressure was. Um, she was very, very adamant that uh, this isn't normal, this isn't healthy. And, you know, it scared me, uh, so, you know, coming from a health professional, uh, it, it really did scare me. And up until that point, were you just um, just kind of playing dumb? You know what I mean? Like, were you just kind of like in denial, I guess is a bad word. <laughs> you know, and denial yeah. about your own health. Like you just kind of thought like, it is what it is. Like I like pizza, you know, like what was. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you kind of just learn to ignore it or, you know, explain things off. Like I start getting brain fog and oh, well, dementia runs in my family. You know, it's not the elephant in the room. You know, the, the fact that I'm eating unhealthy and weigh 325 pounds. Um, so you, you start to explain things away and make excuses for yourself. So what do you think, um, changed that? Cause you know, like, like you said, I know, um, you know, it breaks my heart. It, it broke my heart regularly to, to, to not even know you, you know, to, yeah. um, cause Alicia, his wife is one of my best friends as well. And, or to see you kind of hiding, um, on the very few trips that you would attend, you know, like he's somewhere in a casino somewhere. Like we, we heard he's here, but we still don't see him the one time he came, um, you know, and even for your kids to, you know, I'm sure not get to be super involved or active in their lives, you know, while you're dealing with this pain of, of losing your own dad, but what, you know, cause you still sat on the sideline for so long and what made you make that change, um, you know, to now, cause I feel like something had to happen, like something, was it just yeah, a combination no. of all of those things and it was that the health scare? Yeah, it was really the health scare and the fact that, you know, here I was, you know, my excuse was, well, you know, I'm going to go out in my own terms, you know, we all die anyway, um, you know, might as well die, you know, 60 and happy eating whatever I want, then 80 and miserable eating fruits and vegetables. Um, but I'd gotten to a point where, you know, what I was capable of doing was no longer really considered living. Um, you know, I sitting around all day and not being able to do activities or, or, you know, have fun with my wife or go on vacations. I mean, what are you really doing? You're just kind of waiting out the rest of your days to, you know, rot away. Um, you know, and, and I, I recognize that. And it really sunk in when I started having those health scares that like, this is it, you're something, you're going to have irreversible damage happen to you if you don't stop this, um, you know, and then it's going to be too late. Um, you're going to be in here hooked up for all these monitors and you're going to, you know, either you, half your body is going to be, uh, you know, numb from a stroke or, you know, you're going to have a coronary disease, you know, who knows what's going to happen, but it's going to be irreversible and there's no pill that's going to fix you. Um, you know, and it was kind of like a fight or flight situation. Uh, you're, you either give up and, or you do something about it. And I chose to do something about it. And what did you do? Um, I immediately started eating healthy, uh, you know, and, and, and eating healthy, you know, clean. Uh, you know, I cut out, you know, red meats and grease and, you know, uh, sodas. You know, soda was a big one for me, um, even diet soda. Uh, you know, I started drinking water, um, you know, I was eating vegetables. Uh, and that was just the beginning. I, mean, I wasn't even following a plan to start with. Uh, 
I, you know, I, I did workouts on my own, uh, just, you know, ellipticals and, you know, lifting a couple weights and uh, that got me so far, but then I hit that wall, the same wall I'd hit before, you know, cause it's not like you go 12 years without even trying, you know, there were times that I had tried, but I had tried and failed. Um, and I had hit this point again where, you know, I'm, you know, I'm doing something, but you know, I'm not getting that next step. Um, I, you know, it, it's what are they, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and, you know, expecting a different result. And it's like, well, okay, I've made it this far. What do I need to do now? Um, and Alicia was doing a uh, lift four at the time and she invited me to do a workout with her. I was like, oh yeah, I know they're doing weights. You know, that's kind of my thing. Um, and I freaking loved it. I, I loved every um, workout. I loved Joel's energy. I loved his cueing and his workouts. Um, it was just the perfect thing for me. So I started doing that and then I did lift more. And to be honest with you, even doing those workouts, you know, I was skipping the hip days. I was skipping leg days. You know, I was, in, I was doing the bike. So, you know, even though I was making these great gains, I still had room for improvement. And, um, you know, I, then we went to a, a live workout with Joel and that kicked me into the next gear because I had such a good time at this workout with him. And I was like, you know what, next time I do a live workout, I'm not going to be on my knees. I'm going to be doing all the workouts, you know? So I was like, I'm going to go home. I'm going to do all the hit. I'm going to do all the leg days. Um, you know, it's almost, and like, it's, you, it's almost like you turn something on within yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's like um, you started making and taking enough steps and you transition that feeling of failure to, I have room to grow instead of like, Oh, exactly. I fell because I was on my knees. It's no, I have room to grow. And that's such an amazing shift. That's going to keep you going instead of set you back when there is something you can't do or when you are tired or whatever the case may be. But I just think that is so incredible um, to just, I just think it's remarkable to sit on the sidelines for so long and like you said, to just try every now and then and, and go back and um, to just not, because now how long has it been? How much have you lost? Like, go ahead and, and give us your amazing. Oh, goodness. Um, today I was 206 pounds. So that's uh, two or 100 and I can't math today. You don't, you don't have to do math. You just need to transform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 115 or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but 325 to 206. That's 119 so. pounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So 119 pounds. Um, and when I, you did know, you, when did you start your journey? So you did 119 pounds and how long has it been? Oh, goodness. I started really doing it uh, December of not last year, the year before. So about 16 months. Wow. Yeah. And literally, you guys, I'm telling you, completely different person. If you think your health doesn't matter, it doesn't play into your self-esteem, your confidence, like he said, your mental clarity, um, just your feelings about your life and everything. It, it matters so much. And Tyson is proof. So um, Tyson, I just want to thank you because you, to me, you give everyone a gift of encouragement, of inspiration, of hope um, that it's not too late for them. I think a lot of people sit in that space of like, I've tried before and I failed. I've tried before and it didn't work. Um, you know, just feeling a, a sense of like hopelessness or helplessness, or it's been so long because you also develop these lifelong patterns and habits, whether they're serving you or not, they are, they are part of you. And you made a decision that it wasn't going to be part of you anymore. And um, that's a powerful decision to make that, that I feel like not a lot of people will, but hopefully by hearing your story, they will start to reconsider it and they will start to realize, guess what? Why not me? It's not too late. And, um, and maybe they feel like you, maybe they have, they have resigned to kind of just waiting out death and no longer living uh, because there's a big difference in living and, and not, and you are proof of that. So I just want to thank you. I want you guys, please, please, please vote. It's once a day, share his story. Um, once a day between now and June 7th. And, um, I just think it's also really rewarding to get to do this for someone. Uh, because if he wins, I mean, that's incredible. We, we celebrate him at our annual convention and, uh, we celebrate this amazing work that he's done. And, um, he gets a, a cash prize, which is amazing too. But I think, you know, if, no matter who's on the other end of this, I'm excited because I want to get to do this for you. So hopefully people will vote. Did you want to say anything else in closing? 
No, no. Um, you know, I, I really, uh, it really makes me excited when I hear people using my story to motivate somebody, a loved one, or even I mean, themselves. can you believe it's you that they're talking? Like, would you ever have thought that, like, <laughs> right? Tyson is the one that we're sharing a story to motivate other people? I know it's so cliche, you know, like, if I can do it, anyone can do it. You know what I mean? Especially where I was mentally. Totally. Totally. Well, thank you, Tyson. And thank you, everyone, for voting. Um, and spread the word now on June 7th. Thanks, everybody. All right, Tyson, see you later. See you on that big stage. Thank you, Jessica. Bye. Bye.